And we're back. Hey. Hey, How's everybody hey. doing tonight? Oh, hey, there's a whole bunch of people in here already that are waiting. I mean, we got Dan, and, and we got Anthony, yep. a whole bunch of people. We got Dan Woods. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for joining us, guys. All right. So before we kick this off and start talking about all the things that are plaguing you or you have questions about or whatnot, doing this Q&A kind of session here, um, I think on behalf of all of us, I'm safe in saying this one, we just kind of want to apologize for not giving an explicit warning to our show on Thursday there. Um, it got a little crazy, but I mean, it was New Year's. We were trying to have some fun and everything, but we understand that there are some younger viewers that do watch this with their families. And we try to keep it as family friendly as possible. Um, that was kind of the exception. So again, on behalf of us, I apologize for not giving you guys a warning on that one. Just wanted to throw that out here. <laughs> Parental guidance is suggested. We're going to have to that start. Was, that was Thursday. <laughs> We're good tonight. We'll be good tonight. I promise. <laughs> we'll behave. Yeah. That is too funny. All right. So, guys, we, we do have a giveaway that we're going to do at some point in time throughout the show. We're not going to tell you when because you got to be here. you got to be entered in order to win it. We're going to be checking stuff. So, hopefully everybody got in. Good luck to everybody. This is an awesome, awesome giveaway here. I have actually seen these corals in person and everything that Thomas has from Fancy Clownfish. They are fantastic. So, somebody's going to win this, and they're going to absolutely love it. So, good luck to everybody again. Um, I think that's going to be about that for now. But uh, seriously, start throwing some questions here and everything. Let's get this kicked off. Just one other thing before we get started. So, the contest was running in the Farm Brew Reef Club. I've had a few people say, hey, I never was able to enter. Some people on YouTube. Well, I've posted everywhere. It always The contest is always running in the Farm Brew Reef Club on Facebook. So if you're ever going to enter, make sure and join the club and not miss out. Because I hate when people are like, oh, I didn't see it, but I've been running for like, what, a week, two weeks now? And, yeah. right? So you got to you, know, you watch for the updates. You got to read all the fine print in there and how to enter. And you know what I mean? Not just you know, wait to the last minute to enter. It makes things difficult because we've had over, there was like 52 entries tonight. And I have to go through them all and get them all into the wheel. So make it fair for everyone, not to like be at like last minute. So just a little timbit. And plus, if you're on StreamYard tonight, Make sure to let StreamYard have permission to put your name on the screen so we know who who we can answer and say your name on here. So, yeah, just want to put those tidbits in there. Yes, and we always say the same thing. You got to be in it to win it. Not just this contest, but we hold polls. We hold questionnaires. We have regular giveaways. Um, we have discounts on sale items for different companies. When they give us those codes, we post them yep. on Farm Bar Reef Club. I even copy them over to Brooklyn Aquarium Society. We kind of try to keep you guys informed. But if you're not in it, you're not a member, then you won't know. And then when Saturday comes, everybody's trying to get it at the last minute. It's just unrealistic for us to try to go through all those names while we're trying to do the streaming at the same time so once again reiterating what ryan and sean just said that's the deal second point of business which haunts on the first part check out our pages check out bees reef check out d from brooklyn check out farm boy reef and you'll be in the know when we post the videos we usually shoot a promo saying what's going to come or we'll drop a hint of what's going to come the next or following week so check out those channels subscribe hit that bell ring it and be nice to each other please right okay so speaking of giveaways by the way uh, an interesting thing came up recently um <clears throat> somebody had a little bit of a point that they made where this giveaway was limited specifically to people in the u.s reason being is it involves a live animal and customs and everything for canada i mean that's just a nightmare so to make up for it here in the next you know probably about a month or so we're gonna run another one and i'm gonna sponsor it in the farm boy reef group and i'm gonna do a hundred dollar gift card to you canadians and only canadians can win that one so we're gonna do one specific for you guys nice you're so generous sean you're, you're a very generous man hey i mean i care man i'm all about spreading the love I mean, yes, I talk a lot of smack and I ruffle a lot of feathers, but really at the end of the day, I am all about helping people. I'm all about educating people and I'm all about uplifting people. To be realistic. That's what, the hobby, so that's what the hobby is all about. That's the whole point of this. Definitely. Okay. A so lot we got of comments. Today. A lot of comments. 
Uh, first question here is from that Reef Finest Reefer. It says, my tank has dinos, my nitrates were zero, and my PO4 was close. I started dosing nitrate. I got them up to four. I'm shooting for 10. Is that good? Should I start some chato? Uh, bro, that's way too high. Shoot for like three. Like, as long as you have detectable nitrates, you're good, but your goal should roughly be about three. Any higher than that, and it's just, ugh, it's bad. It starts causing problems. And you definitely don't want your PO4 at zero. You want it like 0 0.03. Sure. And the Chato, the Chato may or may not add to that because um, you're adding it after the fact. It should absorb the nitrates, but you got to give the Chato a minute to get established. Um, it's kind of like any other plant. You can't just throw it in there and expect it to root up. That's kind of a, a problem that a lot of people have, and they'll find that Chato will melt or you'll end up with a bigger algae problem than you started out with. So be careful when trying to throw a Band-Aid on a, on a problem. Yeah, but his tank already has dinos, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it comes down to you got to make sure and keep your numbers up, right? That's the problem why you got it in the first place. Stability. Mm -hmm. You can't zero everything out. Yeah, because now you're throwing another factor in. I mean, if it's any consolation though, bro, I promise you I'm doing the same thing right now. Um, I had a lot of bleaching going on with my corals. My stuff was running, or I was running zero nitrate and I was running 0.2 phosphate. I mean, Corona has not been good to me. I super neglected my tanks. Um, I've henceforth corrected that, dropped my phosphate down and started dosing neo nitro to get my nitrates up. And now everything's coloring back up. It just takes time, you know, get those levels stable. That's the most important thing right there. All right. Um, let's see. Now, what is Thomas matching $100? I see Thomas Mascarena says he'll match that $100. He must be a high roller. Ooh, where is <laughs> where's this? Where's this? I'm not seeing Thomas saying that. He's above battle. He's way up there. He did. Thomas did. So Thomas is Fancy Clownfish. He's the owner. Okay, great, man. Yeah. That is awesome, Thomas. Really, really appreciate that. I will get with you soon when I come to pick up my coral and my fish that you're holding now. Um, we'll, we'll hash it out and we'll see what we can do there. Really hook up some Canadian reapers. Thomas will be jumping on. Thomas will be jumping on too when we go to pull the name. Cool. Man. Uh, so here's a question that's got me stumped, but you guys have been in long enough that you should know this one. Uh, what is the danger of having a high magnesium level? To tell you the truth, I haven't seen a really high. What and what have you? What do you call high? Yeah, uh, I mean that's the first question. What do you call high? And the second question would be: Are you still dosing with your numbers elevated? I mean, I've had problems where I'm dosing. You guys see my alkalinity. My alkalinity can sit at fourteen, but I'm not still dosing. I stop. Yeah. <laughs> like some people have a auto doser and you're dosing magnesium and you see that number high. If it's high, of course, you don't want to continue dosing the element, but anything can be a problem. The fact that you see that it's high should automatically raise a flag and stop dosing. Well, that's if they're dosing. I mean, we don't even know if they're dosing. Another thing, though, is good water changes, like using a high quality salt will help level all of that stuff out. You got to be consistent with that as well if you're not dosing. But you shouldn't really get high magnesium because, I mean, alkalinity, calcium and magnesium all kind of have a balance and they'll kind of precipitate themselves out. And the only the only source that I know outside of dosing it is usually when you do water changes is a set level of magnesium. That's why like, when people say they have a high magnesium, Usually you're dosing it <laughs> like like maybe you overdosed it. But like Sean says, you can do a water change. But I would be curious as to how and why and what that number is mm -hmm. that you're that you're sitting at. Like are you talking 2000 <laughs> or like usually I'm looking at like 1400. Usually people have low magnesium. Yeah, exactly. So, JC Reeves. Awesome for the super chat. Thank you. We really appreciate it. But he says that, or they say, sorry, um, they say high mag can kill inverts for sure. And yeah, I mean, that is definitely a true, true statement there. The inverts are super sensitive to magnesium. Yeah, I usually, like myself, I don't know, keep mine around 1340, 1350. Yeah, 13, usually it's low. Like, I see, I've never really seen magnesium go over. I see comments here. I'm not sure if I'm reading right, but... Uh, 
I see uh, Alice saying Alice Hobart saying is Boreopsis run magnesium at nineteen hundred. Um, um, Max Dirtbag fifteen hundred. I don't. I Some mean, you will take on LG, right? So. Yes, but um, then you're running the risk of affecting inverts, even sea urchins and and things like that. You'll see shrimp and inverts like that may recluse which means you may stop seeing them for a while as they <laughs> try to adjust to your elevated levels. Dang. Okay, so Matt, going back to that, yeah, was talking about how he does his all for reef and if he skips water changes, it'll jump it up. Yeah, that's because there's magnesium in it. So you're yeah. basically dosing magnesium there and it just shows that your corals aren't uptaking it. What is he, what's his levels at though? Oh, I don't know, this is a different person. This is Matt. I've never had my magnesium ever go over like two thousand or. Anything yeah, I've like never, that. I've never seen it high magnesium, but once again, if you're using an auto doser, people, I hope you guys are testing. Like, if you're auto dosing, please test your tank. If you don't have like Alcatronic or something that's manually giving you regular readings, and you're auto dosing, you had better be testing because you could easily kill everything in a tank because the if your corals are not uptaking those elements or balancing your your alkalinity and calcium levels then you're saturating the water column with these chemicals it's like taking too many flintstone vitamins too many vitamins can be a bad thing well yeah ryan changing the background here i saw those comments dude yeah. and sydney Making me look creepy or something. What the hell? Is it? Oh. Come on, play the good thing. Why you gotta change it? Come on now. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see what else we got here because I think we kind of beat the the magnesium one to death here. Yeah, where are we here? I'll, I'll pull them up. Okay, so this one is one more for you guys because I don't dose this stuff. But it's a or Roy uh, Dugay says my alt keeps dropping over one dkh in a day. My sand is clumping, so have precipitation for sure. Now, how do I stop it? I use barish soda ash with a dose controlled by the Tridents. Uh, okay, first off, my first question on this, like I don't know what the soda ash stuff. I don't dose that myself. Soda first. ash, soda ash is for dousing alkalinity. Yeah. Now, soda ash or baking soda can both be used to raise and 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 do the alkalinity. But soda ash can make your alkalinity really creep up. Like you, tr you, you have to do them in balance. Like as you guys see, my my crazy alkalinity, I was dosing two part, and then I used the calcwasser. But based on what I was already dosing, I had a ridiculous spike in the alkalinity. Soda ash is going to really, really raise your pH. Long story short, cut it back. If you see your numbers elevating, cut it back. Balance your dosages. Do not think that you can just do the soda ash and, and leave the, out the calcium or, or my calcium's low. Let me just dose calcium without the alkalinity. Soda ash is the same thing. Soda ash is going to raise your pH and is going to raise your alkalinity. So, um, cut it back you might have to do a water change and try to get your numbers back where you want them to be that can be expensive if you got a hundred plus gallon tank but cut, cut back <laughs> cut back yeah see i mean that was all i was gonna say is that if you're getting precipitation then your magnesium or your calcium have to be out of whack so you definitely got to get that in balance all right um <laughs> let's see where's another good question here <laughs> Matt Levin, a year, does that count? No. <laughs> Here's one from Charles. If you got no nitrates and no phosphates, do you need to add Cheeto? No, he said no need to add Cheeto. Yeah, that's what I said. No need. So if you don't have those, then no, because you're just going to kill your Cheeto. But on the upside, if you're killing your Cheeto, you're going to be adding that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. But you, you really can... have those at zero, though. Don't don't bottom that stuff out. That's where you get into dinos and cyano, and it just gets disgusting and a pain in the butt. Sid says my nitrates are at 20. Yeah, first off, we know he's lying. Second off, <laughs> he's got a freaking shark tank. He can have high nitrates. It's okay. But he does like a million water changes, though. Yeah, so then he definitely doesn't have 20 nitrate. That or he's got a decomposing he might. somewhere. He might. <laughs> it you're depends getting, on the filtration. You're getting made fun of, too, there, Sean. I know. I saw. I was laughing. <laughs> freaking James. <laughs> Let's see. 
Just started dosing soda ash with my cock. Be careful, buddy. Battle, battle, battle. Be careful. I've made that mistake. Dosing the soda ash with the cock. Check your alkalinity, man. Mine hit 20 at one point. <laughs> I was scared 20? of that. Remember I told you I hit because I dripped it. I have I have a slow drip method of dosing the yeah. alkalinity. But what happened is I forgot that I was already dosing the two part. And halfway through that, that cork washer, I said, let me check this. And I was like, holy crap, I'm hitting the <laughs> like 20. You don't need to dose both of them. We do because like he says, like Ryan's getting reports on his alkalinity levels on a regular. He can get an alarm if his alkalinity reaches a certain number and he'll know to stop dosing it. If you're not getting that sort of report, be careful. I cry wolf when, whenever I see somebody dosing caulk because I have made many mistakes over decades with yeah. caulk. Yep. It's, it's the first thing before we had two part, there was caulk washer before we had two part. And a lot of people crashed their tanks or ended up with snow white tanks. So less is more. Exactly. <laughs> you got to, you got to start slow. It's like, uh, Sid, he posted in the club. He's like, Ryan, I've overtaken you by, I don't know. It was 500 mil a day or something like that. You know what I mean? But you gotta, you gotta take it slow. It affects everything. See, that's why I'm scared to do a, a caulk. I, I kind of want to. But... It's like D said, his went up over to 20. Now you gotta, Easy. Yeah, now you got to bring that down. And it's a pain to bring it down. Yeah, I mean, if down. you got if you got a small tank, if you got 50 gallons, 80 gallons, yeah, that's good. When you're talking 100 gallons of water, first of all, you're shocking. I shocked the hell out of it. I lost Akins. I lost a, a, what a colony of freaking Zinnia. If you can kill Zinnia, you can kill anything. <laughs> but... Uh, I lost colonies because the shift now for me to bring it down, I had to shift it back again, which was dramatic and you don't ever want to do that. So I basically haven't added anything to that tank in the last month in order to get those numbers down. So yeah, yeah that's not fun bringing that down. We live and we learn. Exactly. That's why I'm so particular. Um, I watch everything and how everything is working and how much the corals are, you know, they're taking in and absorbing. I believe the you phrase is anal retentive, not particular. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy. All right. So Anthony asks, how can I stop my skimmer from making micro bubbles? Um, too bad of a question. Bro, we need to know whether or not you've got it on stand. We need to know what model it is. Like, there, there's too many variables. Generally, changing where the skimmer sits in a sump can make a difference. Um, is, there, is it Anthony, our buddy Anthony? that Anthony or different? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he just got a new tank, right? Yes, he actually just won that. New game. Did, he, did he get a new skimmer with it? Yeah, if the tank is new, nine out of ten, the skimmer hasn't been running. A filter socks when filter socks are manufactured, they come with like a, a film on there that will cause and create micro like micro bubbles and overfill your skimmer until it's actually cleaned off. You know what I mean? That's one of the biggest ones, and it's a new tank, so he's probably got new filter socks in there. And if you got a new tank, what are you skimming? Like, honestly, you don't you don't need to skim unless you have organic matter in the tank. Well, he did a tank transfer though, so there's still the water from the old tank and the rock and all that stuff. Yeah, maybe a little die off or whatever. Yeah. It makes sense, but yeah, if he's got a new skimmer and there's a new new filter socks on there, it could be causing a problem. All right, what up, Dustin Williams. What up, Dustin? Let's see. Um, we got the bird's nest growth question here. Bird's nest more sensitive than Monty's and Acros. Getting some burnt tip slash thin skin on my bird's nest, but Monty's and Acros look great still. Uh, there's so many variables with that. We can't even begin to really touch that. Like, what's your alkalinity at? Um, you know, what are your nitrates and phosphates at and everything? Like, there's a bunch of variables that go into that because what I'm thinking there is probably that your bird's nest is actually growing faster than its flesh can because you're yep. running a high um, pH and a high alkalinity. So I, there's a bunch of variables there. I mean, without those numbers, it's hard to give you a real answer. I love bird's nest. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I've never had good luck with them. Either they grow too fast and like become a pain or they bleach back. 
They are awesome coral. Right. Okay. Uh, reefer or refinest reefer. Should I be running my skimmer with having dinos? Absolutely. For aeration, definitely. But try to dial your skimmer back to run as dry as possible. Okay. Because if you've got dinos, again, you're, you've got an imbalance that's going on. But that aeration in your water is definitely good. So you don't want to take that offline. But try to stop removing as much until you get that lined up. We got Dan, Dan Woods here. What's the best test kit? None digital for a new reader. Ooh. Ooh -hoo. House divided right here, I promise yeah. you. Well, the one thing that every single one of us can agree on is not ATI. Well, I've never even used ATI. I'm a big fan of sulfur. Mm -hmm. Sulfur for alkalinity. D, you're um, muted. <laughs> I've used the ATI. I've used the Red Sea. I've used the uh, digital. To tell you the truth, I like to have two test kits now. <laughs> I even if you have the uh, a cheaper one, have a good one, have a cheap. I like Red Sea personally. Yeah, I I, I had Red Sea and never really stuck to it. I always Salford was always my go-to. I just like the ease of Salford personally. Yeah, the nitrate's pretty easy and the alkalinity is easy. I like the Salford ease of the digital. And you guys know I'm not a digital. I'm not the the high tech guy, but yeah, like the alkalinity of phosphate. I love the digital because it gives me a number. I'm too old to be looking at colors. Yeah, oh God. You talk about that, you know? yeah, yeah, I don't know what's yellow or green. I, I, you know, the one thing I can do, I can take my sulfur and go against my alkatronic, hmm. and it'll be bang on. I can do my uh, my HANA checker for alkalinity, and it's usually one dKH off. Roughly, yeah, that's about the same problem I had too. I just had that today. It's funny you say that. Mine was one off. And you'll find that reapers, the same thing. If Mark is on here tonight, he had exactly the same problem. One off? Always one off. It's always one off. One DTH. So, speaking of these awesome digital checkers, uh, I'm really excited to revamp my line. So I have all the Hannah stuff. I love it. I've been dedicated to it. But, but Milwaukee is now releasing handheld testers and they're black and green. They are sick. So, I'm gonna switch over to Milwaukee. Holy well, shit! I like they'll match the Hulk. Those colors. What are you talking about? Black I'm just and green. They are, <laughs> they're amazing. Well, they're, I like the Milwaukee. They always made good pH stuff. So yeah, they've been in the game a long time. But um, yeah, I want to get the digital calcium checker. I don't have a digital calcium checker, and that, that test kit is a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <It's a pain laughs> it is like mixing for the calcium. Isn't it annoying? Well, you got to use. You just got to use like distilled water and then you got to get, yeah, water, and then yeah, it's a bunch of different steps. And then you know what? Somebody was saying if you're not cleaning the tubes with like RO water, they can be a residue from the last test and all this other crap. I like a number now, yeah. I like for like phosphorus, I usually like the ultra low for phosphates, that's my go to for PO4. Mm -hmm. Can't beat it, that's when I. So I have a but, I like to use. But did we agree on a non-digital test kit? Salifert? Salifert. Salifert. So Salifert or Red Sea? That's my take. So both of them, though, depending on what you're testing, one can be better. But if you're going to stick with a singular brand, I would definitely say Salifert. It's proven. It's proven. <laughs> Where is it? I'm trying to find a picture or something of this new line. Like they haven't even really released it yet. They Do you have a picture of it or anything? I'll throw it up on That's here. That's what I'm looking for. All right, go to the next question. Somebody's got to read it. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, there's Mark. Mark's like Selford all the way. Agree. Um, price range. So you guys are looking for the price yeah, range. The ultra 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 is good. The Foster Ultra Low is also okay for required math. Yeah, but the math is pretty easy on it, and it gives, it's pretty accurate. And Paul Matthew says Red Sea is his go-to. So, okay, thanks for the support, Paul. <laughs> for the record, I have multiple test kits, though, just because I just wanted to see how close they are to each other. But you got to be careful with chasing those numbers, man. That's why it's always good to sort of pick one and go with it. That's why that's where I was up in between. It's like I had the sulfur for alkalinity, and then I have the HANA, but here I am getting one point off, but then here I am with – the other, it's like the Alcatronic, and I'm looking at that one. I'm like, okay, I can hit these two the same, but I can't hit the same on the Hannah. You know what I mean? Then it's like, holy shit, I got all this gear. Who do I believe? Then it starts yeah, it's, your mind, right? Yeah, but at the end of the day, are you really going to settle on that one? Like, 
let's say you're going for alkalinity and you hit eight, but the other one says seven, eight, like that's one. Are you going to, how much of a change are you going to put in your tank to make it yeah. seven? But that's you know, why like, like, don't go nuts. Pick one and you got to go with it. Yep. Okay. So here we go. This is, this is the new rebranded stuff. You cannot tell okay, me. It ain't gorgeous. And they actually have the handheld ones, the handheld testers. Let's see. They streamed it down. It looks like the same thing. They changed yeah. the body. I have that one. That I one have the guy, yeah. I, have I the actually one. have. Yeah, I have that one. I no, haven't used it in a long time. But yeah, but they actually have the handheld ones. They're all black. That's with the one I use. Too. That, yeah, that digital solidity. That's the one I got. That green one. That's freaking awesome. I mean, the rebranded or the re-skinned version of it. Like these things They're are awesome. Awesome. nice and streamlined. Yeah. I, I'm all for it. So that's I, love, I love my Salinity one. It's freaking awesome. Well, they were one of the innovators. I gotta say, like Milwaukee is like the one of the the innovators in that digital testing. We got a lot of competition now, but they've been out for a long time. Mm. All right. So what else do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, you're not going to get off that easy. Thomas says, let's give away the two gold hammers. You're going to have to hold out when we announce okay. it. We're, gonna announce on, it. we're giving away two now? I don't, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so two winner, So two winners tonight? Yeah, Thomas, you better clarify on that one, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's saying, wait, hold up. We're saying we give it two? He wanted to up you, Sean. I mean, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm telling you, Thomas is a great dude. He, he really is. is. I can't right? wait on the show and meet him. He's a lot like us. He really he is okay with peeing in somebody's Cheerios as long as he's taking care of his customers. And I can really, really appreciate that. I've noticed that I've jumped in on a few of his, uh, his lives going on there for the auctions and stuff. He mm -hmm. has got some awesome prices on there. I wish I lived there. I mean, I, I heard, never, I never catch those auctions, man. I always catch it after the fact too little, too late. I heard his soul last night. I won a New York Knicks torch for 200 bucks. Really? I'm just saying I heard his soul last night. <laughs> Let's see. Candles Reef. What's the best lighting for a four foot mixed reef? That is like the biggest question in the planet. Like, there is, you can ask 10 different people and 10 different people will give you 10 different answers. Or they're all going to be basically the same, but still slightly different. You yeah, know, but without knowing what kind of tank you got, what are you trying to keep? How deep is the tank? Yeah. Those reef, breed, mean, reef breeders, is that what they're called? They're like four foot or four foot. Yeah, I love the reef breeders. Reef breeders have been around a long time too. Looks pretty good, eh? Photon, photons, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we, we with those, Anthony. That's a better question that you know we we can work through later because there's so many variables on that. But I, I think all of us can agree that at bare minimum, you either need to run some reef bright strips or some T5s. You know, something like an accent because that light you got right now, bro. I'm telling you, that's pathetic, <laughs> and you need a hookup. What is it? What is that even on there? Maybe a razor or something? I don't even know <laughs> what it is. It, it's so bad, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> well, when you want it, right? It didn't come with any lights. No, they it didn't come with lights. Oh, it's just tank stand. They come with a sump. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I need lights, lights, lights. People yeah, never really want to give you lights because it's so many. Light. Yeah, so many options with lighting. I guess the guy that ran the contest could have put some lights in there. Dude, you're getting the whole setup. I mean, really. Yeah. Well, and he didn't even get the same size tank that he won. Because he won an 1800 like mine, but his house won't support it, so he dropped the weight mm. down. So, I mean, they really should throw in some lights in there. Well, couldn't they make, uh, make up the price for the lighting? Yeah. yeah. You know, go retail the retail. Like, well, usually they probably have it in inventory, what they were going to send you, so they sized it down to facilitate but there's yeah. so many options with lights like are you using a hood are you not using the hood are you going to mount them to the ceiling i mean okay. you, can get, you can get some eco techs and just put them on arm i mean right hey you you do that. Let, let's do something fun here uh we have a question this i need to raise my alt what's a good way to do it and i would love to answer that question and we will do that right after this quick message from our sponsors <laughs> If Ryan's ready here. <laughs> I belong, I belong to you. 
So, right yeah, there, you can we do. Co we coordinated that a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was trying to do because Ryan's like, we should do it in half an hour, and then he always gets sidetracked and forgets. So, I mean, hey, well, I'm trying to get all these comments up here, man. There's so many. There's yeah, so I'm trying to see me guys typing here. All right, so Eco Vlad's asking that raising out question. Um, we again, you're gonna do it a million different ways from a million different people. Me personally, I have the ESV Bionic uh buffer that I use just because it raises out specifically if I'm running low on that and I need a little help with my reactor, it's not dialed in or I screwed something up or whatnot. But that's just me. I mean, I don't know what you guys are running. I, you yeah, know, I, I run the Kelsey reactor, that's what I run, and I'm running my uh Kelp washer. it raises my alkalinity at the same time. I was always scared. I, I, I said this a million times. Always scared. I have the huge calcium rack that's sitting in my basement. Got the media, and I was always scared to run it because I've just, I know technologies change yeah. a lot, but I'm always scared. Don't be, to afraid, don't be intimidated. You got to jump into it, buddy. Seriously, when you have a calcium reactor, it makes life so much easier. And I like really dial it in. You getting that consistency? Well, I don't have. I, I don't have the. Uh, that pH controller, you know, that the fancy one, the uh, the minimal doser. That so I'm kind of on the fence to waiting until I get that. But that's yeah. another big ticket item. Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, but you got the most expensive part already taken care of. Yeah, yeah, just hook it up, D. Right. Okay. Uh, so Noah here, this opinion on high potassium. Uh, I have no opinion because I don't know. Like, I don't really pay attention to potassium. I mean, I just deal with that with my water changes and everything. However, I will say this much. I recently have been looking into uh, reef moonshine. So I'm thinking about switching my tank over when I move everything to the 1800 and using that. So I'm definitely going to have to pay attention to it then. That'll reef go. moonshine. I'm, I'm dosing vodka. Is anybody else dosing vodka? So this, this reef moonshine a program is kind of like the Trident system, except you do ICP tests and you add what your reef actually needs to get it to the right levels. It's actually a really cool system. I'm kind of into it. I'm not about biting that price point to get it started. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you know, you're, you're looking at about 400 bucks to start out. But at the same time, if you're dosing uh, the Red Sea colors program stuff or whatnot, um, you're still about 400 bucks to get that stuff on. So. Yeah. Or you, I, want, or you I wonder how spot on that is. Sorry, Sorry Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> okay. I, or you I, I, just the other Ryan here. He's like, bring me on. I'll talk about RM. No, Ryan, I'm not bringing you on to talk about that. The show isn't about that. Get them to commit to a show with us. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. That's that, Noah, that's a great question. But uh, let's put that one in the reserve. Let me get a little experience, and then I'll be able to answer that one quite effectively. All right. Um, we got Aaron Ward. Aaron here. Uh, black, what do you boxes. black boxes versus top name brand lights. Price per car. Dude, first you get what you pay for. That's the first thing. Second, I know guy with magnificent tank, and he has black boxes, so I will not negate it. But once again, there are downsides to black boxes. They will grow coral. I don't have the most expensive LEDs on my tank, but your options are different. So I didn't understand. Oh, you hear Google listen to me. I'm not talking to you, Google. Shut up, Google. The thing is, right, when it comes to the Chinese, like the Chinese black boxes and stuff, A, where you buy them, are you going to have the customer, customer service if they do break down on you? Yeah, but if you're paying 60 bucks, who cares? Just buy a new one. Oh yeah, well, uh, well, you could pay you could pay two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, four hundred bucks once, or you can buy three black boxes and have to replace three black boxes, which you could have just bought a good fixture to begin with. I mean, there is truth. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of people that run them. I know Ryan from Reacrotics is uh, running them on some of his stuff too. Yeah. There's a lot of really, really amazing tanks out there that run them. Um, they're a little more finicky. Some of them can be very, very powerful in fry your tank if you're not paying attention. I mean, it, there's a lot of risk that comes into them, but I can't knock them. I, I really can't. Oh, I've never used them. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. I have one over my cube that I did not mean to grow coral in, and coral are growing in there. 
So did I plan on it? No. One thing, if you're going to buy a black box fixture, one thing I would say is if you're going to buy something and let's face it, some people are just limited by budget and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're going to buy a black box, look for a manufacturer that tells you what kind of diodes are in that box. Do you, you want um, a level, uh, what is it, Levelor or Elux or what kind of diodes are in it? Like you want specifications like on what it is. You want to know how many watts. Don't go by par because nobody's telling you what par you're going to have in your tank. If they are, they're lying because a lot of things affect par in your tank. So look for specifications. All right. Let's see. Um, so it seems that the common problem with this phosphate or nitrate stuff is coming through a lot with a lot of people. Guys, you got to get them in line. If you need nitrate, dose nitrate. If you need phosphate, feed more. I mean, those are the easiest ways to bring those up. Get them balanced. When you get them balanced, you're not going to have all of these algae issues. You're not going to have the diatoms or the cyano. Um, okay, so a Facebook user here asks a question about a DKH swings going from 8.8 .8 to 8.4 to 8.6. Realistically, that's a fairly nominal swing. Like You don't want to have that happen all the time. You want to get that kind of leveled out. But if, if you do that once or twice every once in a while, whatever, it's not going to do anything. It, it's so nominal. I mean, hell, my tank does that every three days because I don't have my reactor dialed in properly yet. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't, like, I got my reactor, it's all dialed in. So it, it usually stays around 8.4. It doesn't really swing. If it does swing, it's going down a little bit because, you know, the corals are growing and absorbing. So I just dial it in a little more and we're good to go. Now, you do an auto water changes, Ryan, in your system? Um, yeah, I was. Now I'm not. Everything is perfectly in check again. I only do it when I need to. Because I was going to ask. I was going to ask if you see the swings. Do you still see the swings when you're doing the water water change? Uh, the only reason I do like two gallons a day is just to get some of the elements that I'm not getting by coming out of my calcium reactor and stuff. There's just that little extra that's in whatever recipe, that, you know, it's in the salt. So just doing that two gallons a day helps, you know, raise, you know, potassium or iodine or whatever that my tank is lacking. So right now I'm not even doing any water changes at the moment. There's no, re no reason to. I mean, you get on that Reef Moonshine program, you won't have to worry about water changes at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm at with that. I mean, you figure you have a 200-gallon system, and you do two 20-gallon changes a month, and you figure out what that is, cost of salt and water-wise and everything. Like, yeah. That's a lot of dang money and a lot of buckets hauled or whatnot, depending on how you have that done. That's part of one of the things that's attractive to that system to me. Yeah. Well, that's one of the good points about auto testing your tank because then you can see what the effect is mm -hmm. with a water change versus without a water change. I haven't had that luxury, so I'm doing it the old fashioned way. But I can see that without the water change, I can still monitor whether I'm having any changes in the parameters of the tank. Yeah. We're really quick to add a lot of chemicals to the tank. Just people, I know a lot of people are asking questions about the phosphate levels and the alkalinity. Stability, as Sean said, is key. I mean, don't yep. just dose something just to dose it because, you know, you don't know what you're dosing or why dose it if you got no coral in the tank. Then yep. just let your tank establish itself and then correct the parameters with the dosing. Yeah. Just like Ryan said, Ryan, go to... Uh moonshine reefers i've talked to him a few times he sent me his his book to read and i went over it it's pretty interesting hey i'm still on the fence about doing it it's probably really good i've been seeing a lot of great results but let me do it for you first <laughs> yeah but i don't know it's just if my tank's running good i don't know like do i need to do I, it? i'll bite the bullet and, and let you know how it works okay you you buy two kits you send me one i'll try to do it for you Shh, you high <laughs> <laughs> Not You're a high roller. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. We're buddies. Come on. But going, to, going back to what we were talking about with like stability and not adding stuff and everything, Matt Greer asked uh, about if he should stop all for reef and go back to two part to help with pH, saying his pH is between 7.8 and 7.9. Honestly, I love all for reef. I'm running that on my I office. Love it too. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, you got to stay on your water changes because it does dose a lot of stuff that you're not necessarily using up all the time. So you got to stay on that. But beyond that, I love it. Um, if it's a pH issue, honestly, for that little bit of a pH raise that you Cut need, it back a little. I 
Yeah, I mean, well, it shouldn't really be dropping as pH though. But what I was going to say is just add a CO2 scrubber. That's going to be the cheapest, most effective way to bump that pH without adding something to the tank and getting into a whole bunch of equipment. I mean, you can use an old reactor and plumb in some lines to it and plumb that to your skimmer. And then you got $12 worth of media or so that you're changing every few weeks. I mean, it's just a cheap way to do it without adding stuff to the tank water. Because I mean, you start adding stuff, it starts creating other headaches, like getting your alkalinity up to 20 with Calquaser. It will raise your salinity, too. That's the one thing I noticed with the Bionic and the old, the old Reef. All for Reef, I think, was a little better. But watch your salinity level because it will creep up on you. <laughs> but other than that, that stuff is awesome. One product, it was so easy to dose. I didn't worry about nothing. I just, in the nano tank, I was literally dosing five mils. And I had acros i didn't keep in any tank i hadn't had chalices and acros grow in any tank the way they grew when i was dosing that stuff so yeah good product i've never used it so i can't put my input on that one it's totally worth it if you have I, a I, I dosed it you know i dosed it ryan i think he introduced it at the show what was, i think it was magna two years ago or something like that and it wasn't even all for reef. He had had the bottle was still being branded. And I was like, okay, I'll test this stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, this stuff works. Yeah, I mean, I love it. Uh, okay, so EcoVault here says pH average is 8, but Alk is 6.8. Honestly, if you're getting 8.1 to 8.4 on your pH, that's still good. Hey, yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. Don't worry about stability. Eight, anything over eight is still pretty good. Uh, your alkalinity, in my personal taste, is a little low. I'd be shooting more for like a seven four to an eight four and maintaining stability. But you're fine. I mean, I ran a twenty gallon that spent most of its life at about six point seven alkalinity. So I'm just saying, like, aim for that stability. Yeah, if you want to change some stuff and and do it, go ahead. But you don't necessarily have to. Um, LX says the CO2 scrubber seem weird. I'd rather add alk than throw out canisters full of spent. Well, Lex, Lex, one thing that to ask before you do anything, where is your tank? Is it in your living room? Is it in a closed room? You may have excess CO2 in the room when you're yeah. throwing your pH down. And like mine is in my dining area. So when I have a lot of people come over, luckily I have the old apex where I have the monitor right on the side. I can literally see my pH dropping. <laughs> so if you weren't monitoring and you checked it like an hour later, you'd be like, oh my God, my pH is 7.8 or 7.9. You could see the fluctuation or, or little things. But if it ain't broke, don't panic. All right. Uh, oh, here's another controversial one. Best brand of media to run in a calcium reactor. Uh, I mean, I'm all about that two little fishies. I'm just telling you, that Reborn and that Remag, I'm loving it so far. I haven't run mine, but I can tell you I bought two little fishies with it. <laughs> so, it's, back, it's back now, right? It's back on the market now, but it's a little smaller, yeah. they're saying. They so, have the bag. I think it's like a. they have one that's a big bag. Yeah, so but it's it's 10 pounds or five pounds. Smaller. It has something to do with regulations or... For shipping ones, I don't know. Well, then they did some rebranding stuff or something. Like I don't remember what it was. I, I just really passed. I don't care as long as I can get it. That's what matters to me. <laughs> Let's see. Wow. We, I mean, I'm only like halfway through these comments, just trying I'm to keep multitask. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, Sean. <laughs> I'm trying to keep them pulling these up. I'm looking on both of the channels. Yeah. Best me best method to bring down nitrates. Um, add more coral. I'm just kidding. Totally. I mean, it, that would work, but um, water change is definitely a good way to bring down nitrates. Uh, Brightwell has some media that you can throw in that's specifically designed to help lower nitrates. Um, Macroalgae reactor. Yeah, I mean, Do you can go the actual way you can. Are, are you are you running a bio pellet reactor? Because they can put your nitrates up too. Whole bunch of variable. Um, Get yourself a packed bellum. Pax Bellum. Shout out to yeah, Pax Bellum. Yeah, Pax Bellum. I, I remember when those guys invented that thing. I did not see it becoming as big as it was today. Shout out to Pax Bellum. Just, just go with a reef octopus algae reactor. I'm just saying, you know, so you might. reef <laughs> octopus. They did. They made it for like a hot minute and got out of it, though. They still make them. So I was just saying, save some money. You know, those Pax Bellums are nice, but God, they're expensive. It's you got to have Apex. Hey, you got to have Apex money to buy a Pax Bellum. Well, why? Why? What's you can run a refugium? I mean, 
are you are you are you feeling better off adding equipment or doing the water change it's up to you you could do the water change too yeah um right here this is it this is the golden goose right here <laughs> the oh. golden goose <laughs> wah, 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 wah. don't get me wrong i kind of want one but at the same oh, time awesome. i'm broke brother right uh let's see two-part dosing do you recommend um i don't do two-part i've never done two-part right the ionic is the father of two-part i'm just saying they're the father of the two-part process bulk reef supply i did use for a while but personally i like the two-part because there there is something about the balance that i felt i was chasing with the bulk reef version but it is it is a cheap alternative to 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 be ionic i just personally like be ionic all right um tom is getting him the link there for a bit amy amy says her reactor has been cutting nitrates quick she's impressed yeah she got a nice one what is the name of hers again yeah what do you have amy i think we saw it in her fish room tour i don't remember what it was she, she just picked one up I think she just got um, is it. it next? Is it the um, what the hell was that brand reactor? Jesus, I had a reactor made by now. I can't think of the name of it. Like, Remember, we were talking about the people that made those reactors that was so strong you could drive the car over it. Bashy there. Bashy, Bashy made a nitrate reactor. I actually sold it because I wasn't using it. And I had a big one. All right. Let's see. Uh, 120 milliliters of soda ash, too much daily on a 100 gallon reef system with medium stock, two year old reef. Uh, what's your consumption? That you know, what's what's the concentration that you're mixing the soda ash at? It, like, guys, some of these questions are really hard for us to answer if we don't have enough information on it. I, I wish we could be better help, but there's a lot of variables that come in with some of these. Maybe it's a test. <laughs> Maybe they're like, let's see. I'll throw a question. See what these guys throw out. Any, no. I would never throw out any old kind of answer because, you know, yeah. there's no quick fix. And sometimes there are a lot of factors. You could be spraying Lysol in a room and that could be throwing all your levels off for, for all we know. Here's and a little yeah. info from Mark. Keep in mind before dosing kelk and elk, either two part, whatever you make sure your mag is proper level otherwise you'll get false readings yeah that's some good advice good advice because it's like the catalyst that holds everything together well that's like that's like the product there, there's there's a big thing people use um what is it buffer i never understood why people use buffers and they're still dosing because what is your goal of adding a buffer if you're dosing yeah it, well, it's like you said with the magnesium, like myself, I'd always have my magnesium where it needs to be, and then I would follow the rest of my elements down the scale. Well, to sort of really answer that question, a buffer is specific for something. Like on my tank, my, my alkalinity, yeah. well, my alkalinity is all over the place, but my magnesium and my calcium generally tend to stay pretty stable. So I run an alk buffer that's specifically just alk. Now, there's a lot of stuff out there that you run that's alkalinity and calcium. So. Yeah. Well, that's what I see, the buffer for the alkalinity. But then you're running the alkalinity, which is going to raise the number anyway. So, eh. Yeah, but that's the only thing I need to run or raise because my calcium and my magnesium are staying within range. So that's why you would do that if you were dosing stuff, is just to help get that where it needs to be. But in theory, your dosing should be dialed in to where you're getting whatever you need with the dose alone. But if you're not, like in my case, where my reactor is all messed up and everything, it's just a safety net to dose just that one thing. So, so here's a test. I want you guys out there that are asking that question. Here's a test. Take one gallon of your water or half a gallon in a container. Put a half a gallon of your tank water in that half gallon container. Put the buffer in it and test your water. If you ever have questions about what's going to happen in your tank as far as your levels, take a sample of your water use the product and see what your numbers are and 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 make an educated thesis make base your testing on that before you just use your tank as a test ground all right so there's a whole bunch of people going back to our test kit there's a whole bunch 40 of people gallon. Uh, um 
Mm. Robert Vacciano. I hope it didn't hike up Italian heritage, Robert. Vacciano. The fish Italian he Robert. There's a 40 gallon burrito with a couple of T5s and Chato has filled the tank. Have a harvest once a month. I'm surprised you're only harvesting once a month. I have to take out so much Chato that I'm having major, like, it's packed into my infusion. <laughs> I was starting to get the uh, diatoms in there because it wasn't moving. It's kind of getting stagnant. Here's a good one for Mark. What do you guys say to folks who don't finally and don't test? You're that's insane. Good luck. Yeah, that's a time bomb. That's good luck. Bomb. Yeah, stop. Stop doing something like that. That's a terrible idea. Do We've not do anything you're not actively testing for. I've been seeing a lot of that in a few groups where the guy's like, he never tests. He doesn't test, doesn't do water changes, but he just doses everything. So why are you dosing if you're not testing? Why dose at all? Well, because I don't know. Because I guess his corals look good. Well, let's put it like this. Who, like a time bomb. Who, who drinks coffee here? Anybody drink coffee here? Yeah. Lots throw of it. Sugar into it. Just keep throwing it in there. You don't taste it. Like, like, do you cook and don't taste it? Like, how do you know what it's doing if you don't test it? What's the point? You just put any old kind of gas in your car. Hey, just pick any gas, regular print, whatever you feel. Just put it in there. Don't, don't, don't check nothing and, and see what you're like spinning that roulette wheel and hoping that you win. <laughs> you know, you know what you're going to get. Exactly. It, it, I don't know. It's like, I don't even want to get on that topic. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure a whole lot of people do that. I, I, would, I would guess probably 50% of the people out there, maybe more, dose and don't have a clue of what their numbers are. Probably just because the market kind of gears towards certain products yeah. as a necessity. Like when you buy a tank, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do this. The science is the science, people. Start with the water. Yeah. Dose. Most of these salts are balanced. Like I know I use the Coral Pro salt. Coral Pro has a high alkalinity in it. I mean, you don't have to dose anything with some of these salts because a lot of the companies have integrated the, the chemicals into the salt mixer. So yeah. you make killing yourself for no reason. Well, when the guy did post, I asked him, I'm like, like, what are you trying to achieve? Because, yeah, you could throw nutrients in your tank like crazy. But if you're running ultra low and you really want your corals to pop, you know, have that nice pastel colors, you don't really want all those high nitrates, right? And this guy's like, oh, look at my coral. Look how well it's doing. But these aren't SPS. These are not acros, you know. So not the good stuff. Ex exactly. So he's just feeding that tank, and I don't think he realizes what he's doing if he really wants to get those corals to pop. But, but. All right. So yeah, especially like I got off coral, so I don't need all that dosing. Yeah. <laughs> so breaking news here: Thomas did confirm he wants to give away two. Yeah. I have. So, all right. Thomas is in the back room. Okay. Hey, well, Thomas. We're almost through a lot of these, so we'll bring him in here momentarily. Uh, real quick. What y'all's thoughts on the Hannah nitrate tester? Um, I'm I don't know about those two, but I'm not mad at myself. Okay, I am not gonna do a 15 minute test to test my nitrate. Hannah, I use the chemical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Like I was gonna get one, but then I see nah. how long it takes. But you are getting a digital readout, right? Like D, you like. I don't the care. Readout, right? I like the digital readout, but I got turned off by the process because there's a lot of room for error. It's so many yeah. steps. You're gonna hey. mess it up. End of the day, though, as long as your nitrate is readable, who cares? You don't have to run that three. You don't have to run 20. As long as it's readable, who cares? I mean, if it's too high, then, yes, you've got a problem. But I'm just saying, as long as you have a measurable amount with nitrate, generally, you're good. Yeah. Like, I just use the sulfur one. That's one I always go off of. I, I legitimately take mine, and I, I mix it, and I let it sit for the three minutes, and I go across the color chart. And I'm like, okay, it's not the top row of anything here. Good. I'm good. Like, I don't worry about the number. Exactly. That and that's what scares me. Is like that guy that doesn't never test. He has no idea what's going on with his tank. Like if you don't know your tank, I don't know, man. I mean, as long as it's not at a hundred, like who cares what you know, you would know. <laughs> he would know. <laughs> yeah, if you're not testing, you ain't gonna know that. Let's see. Uh, just, uh, the first time Reefa says he's seen tanks running 50 parts per million nitrates and it's stunning and that's true your every tank is an individual then again you know it could run stunning up until it hits its saturation point which you never know what that's going to be 
Some people have no nitrates. Some people have elevated nitrate. Tanks have so many different parameters and features to them. You got to be really careful when you're trying to chase those numbers. <laughs> Amy, Amy just said, Sean, just set it down, drink a cup of coffee, and move on. It's 15 minutes. I would agree. If it were for the fact that the whole 15 minutes you're doing it, you got to be doing something. You got to draw it out. You got to dilute it. You got to run it through the little thing. You, you can't to... sit and drink a cup of coffee because then you're going to miss something and screw the whole test up. <laughs> right? Then you're right over. And that 15 minutes just turned to 45. Like, why, you know, why do a 15 minute test when you can get a, a, a Red Sea or a Salifer that's like five minutes? Like, what's the advantage? I mean, yes, yeah, digital. If you're colorblind, if you don't mess up a step, if you don't miss a step, if you're colorblind, yeah, I can, I have a problem with some of those colors. That's why when it it gets into some of those, I do like a digital test. So that hey, may be I your deciding factor. I've got the ultimate solution: just buy a Mastertronic and don't worry about it. <laughs> Use the sound of the money you. flying out of my pockets. <laughs> I'm just saying. Or for that matter, you can you can send out and get and get your water tested. You can do that too. Like you know, yeah, you can do ICP tests. I mean, if if you're lazy, just send out an ICP test. Like do that once every couple of weeks. If you're real lazy, you know, do it. Actually, honestly, I suggest regardless of what you're testing with, you do an ICP test at least every three months, just to err on the side of caution and be safe. I mean, you don't have to, but I I'm just saying that's what I suggest. I used uh, one a long time ago, and actually it had iron. I don't know if it was iron or something like that, some aluminum or iron or something like that. A lot of people get readings of aluminum or iron in the water and have no idea, but it's not something that we test for. But yeah. they usually give you recommendations based on what your levels are to raise this or lower that. They're yep. pretty simple. Oh, Let's see. All right. I just hate when the color wheel don't match the water test. Yeah, me too, right. <laughs> Dave. I hate when that wheel is looking a little blue, but you don't know if that's matching the blue in the test kit or or your lighting is off. Well, that's Duke. Duke that said that. You have to test your water. Dave away from Wilson, too. Yeah, I mean, James makes a valid point there, though. He yeah. Really does. Um, okay, so Randy Tilton asks an interesting question here. ATI versus Triton ICP. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research into this lately. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. Okay. So if you want to do just a quick ICP test, by all means, send it off to Triton. If you want, but they'll do everything that ATI does except for test for fluoride. ATI will test for fluoride. Now your turnaround time on an ICP test with Triton is going to be faster than your turnaround time. Yeah, with I think it was four day. It was a week. It was a week. Yeah, it's, it's like a week with Triton where it can be four to six weeks with ATI because it Ooh. goes to Germany. Which one does Moonshine re Moonshine guy there? He they, they suggest ATI, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah. But it's because of the fluoride. However, you can cheat that because you can buy the Hannah fluoride checker, which I just bought. So I, I can use any. How much, how much did that one run? Forty five, forty four, ninety nine, something like that. See, I always use the uh, Triton. I haven't used the other one. I'd be curious. Now, if we do that test, what is everybody using? Are we all going to use the same? Uh, Test. Yeah, uh, we, you want to or let me let me look into it because there's actually a guy locally here in Denver that uh, does them. Okay, well let so, us know because then I need to order one because I need to get it here in Canada. Oh yeah, it'll take you another couple of days, right? Well, it depends. Or, do they have it here? It sells them, but you're sending them away. They still go back to the same place, don't they? No, they all go to different. There's a lot of different companies now that are doing it. I, I can't see what I paid for it uh, or for that fluoride tester, but yeah, it was like 46 bucks, something like that. Uh, no, don't use the Denver guy. Why? <laughs> no, I'm curious. I mean, I've got a Triton test sitting in my garage that I haven't used, so. I they, had one here. I think I did. Uh, Ruth and Moonshine Energy uses ATI. That's what this. Now, but, Randy says he used Triton, hasn't used the ATI. The $30 company one wasn't a fan of. Now, which one was the $30 company? It must be. It wasn't Triton because I know Triton is fifty. I'm pretty sure uh, I paid forty nine or forty something for theirs. It was fifty. I don't know. Actually, you know what? Maybe we can reach out to Coralview and get them to sponsor us uh, an ICP test. Sure. I'm just saying. Uh, so Sequest Aquariums in Littleton. I have <laughs> not been there. Sorry, 
Dan Woods has me laughing. He says, what is your mail? Come by horse, buggy in Canada? <laughs> oh, come on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it no, comes by, all, it comes by snow dogs. Here. We have all the same luxuries in Canada. Not F snow dogs. What are those? <laughs> yeah. With the little barrel with the whiskey? Oh, jeez. <laughs> St. Bernard's. I could use a St. Bernard with a barrel of whiskey right now. Yeah. You're telling me. All right. So, guys, I mean, we've been on for an hour now. How about we get Thomas on here? Yep. Here we go. Thomas, come on down. You're the next oh, guest. Hey, on the hey, how you guys Thomas. doing tonight? Good. 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 Yeah. I'm all right. Another hey, Thomas. Day at the store. Yeah. Hey. I, I see you're very active, man. Doing a lot of sales and stuff, I see. Yeah, we do uh, a ton of we do the sales just about every week. We put different items on sale. Um, you know, my goal is to have the lowest prices in the country on all livestock, and I try yeah. to do a pretty good job at having those. I I can see that. I'm like, man, I wish I lived there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, Charles, send me a private message. I definitely want to discuss something about that, but. In the meantime, guys, Fancy Clownfish, absolutely amazing. We've got Thomas on here. Um, I'm telling you, best prices on any fish you could possibly want. If he can get it, I promise you, you're going to get a deal. So if you're looking for anything in particular, reach out to him. If you're just looking for some clowns, reach out to him. Let him know what you need. I promise you, he's going to find you the best deal. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And you always want to support people that give back. That's the biggest part of this hobby. We want to keep people in the hobby. We want to have quality fish, animals, livestock, and products. So when you get a company, you get an organization, you get a person that stands behind the product, you want to support them because that's what keeps you in the hobby. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I jump in on his auctions there and I'm like, man, I wish I lived there because like the prices are so good and the quality, it's crazy. So you guys are very fortunate. Yeah. I, I love being this close, even though I'm not close enough because I spent too much money with Thomas. It's still an hour and a half drive for me to go up there to go get stuff. It was a lot easier when I delivered. Yes. Yes, it was. When are you going to start that again? Or are you going to finish your move? <laughs> <laughs> All right. first, time, first time Reefer says shipping to Australia. I don't know about that. <laughs> Wow, you, I don't know about any shot. You guys can go in there. They, they can go in there river and dip out salt water. Get out of here. These guys get yeah. water at the bay. That's what I <laughs> stuff. I need to come out there and get some of those Aussie frags over there. Yeah, I mean, you're telling me. I definitely want some stuff that comes from there as well. Uh, like a 24K. <clears throat> I know you got a couple of those, Thomas. I have one with a green mouth right now. I know. That's what I'm saying. I know you got a couple. <laughs> All right, so anything in particular you want us to know or you want to say about your business or whatnot before we get this going? Um, you know, I'm just thankful that uh, we have so many strong supporters in Colorado. Um, as you know, the Colorado market's been real, real rough. It's a real cutthroat market, and uh, they cannot stand me. They've called the state, the uh, vendors, everything they humanly possibly could do to try to shut me down, but we're still here. We're moving to a new spot, uh, quadruple size and building. We'll have 200 fish tanks full of fish. Wow. Uh, here in about two and a half weeks, three weeks top. So the deals are only going to get better. My New Year's resolution was to lower my prices, and I already have the lowest prices in the country. That's and now what's your what's the link to your page so people can check out all these things? Um, the My group is on Facebook, Colorado Saltwater. Um, I go live daily to do, do my fish feedings online so people can see the fish eating before they even come into the store. Um, I give away a ton of stuff on there, too. Um, I'm all about giving back. My Junior's Reefer group is there where the I have uh, Junior Reefer's kids can come. There. I have a club that they come and talk to me once a month. Nice. And we give them a free frag each month. Um, so giving back to the community that I take from, that's what I do. That's huge. They yep. and very, awesome. very respectable. Yep. Awesome. All right. So we did get a question on here. Uh, U.S. shipping, though, right? No international? That is 100% correct. If you yeah. win, please, guys, if you win and you're in that drawing and you're not in the United States, let us know so we can draw somebody else. We don't want to waste your time or anybody else's. This giveaway was specific to United States residents just because, yeah. you know, nobody wants to deal with the custom stuff and everything. That's just, and that's I'm going to match you on that $100, Sean. I'll, get, I'll throw in 100 for Canadian uh 
the Canadian drawing myself, too. Well, thank you. Appreciate nice. it. That's awesome. So we're going to have a nice one coming up then. Yep, we're gonna have a two hundred dollar giveaway there. That's gonna be yeah. awesome. Somebody, somebody in Canada is gonna be happy. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. All right, and to be um, to win the prizes tonight, you have to be present here. So make sure you guys be chatting. Your names are in here because we're gonna be drawn tonight. And if you're, you know, if you're not here, we're gonna move on and we're gonna roll again until someone is gonna win this baby up tonight. So, so let's get go, let's let's get rolling here. So I'm just going to say, so when we were around the contest, it was in the Farm Boy Reef Club. I pinned in the announcements. So everybody, please make sure and check those announcements when we do have a, a contest going that you guys get entered so, you know, you don't get left out tonight. So let's get the wheel up here. The wheel of fortune. Wheel of fortune. Money, 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 money. Let's go. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Hope uh, you hey. enjoy. Hey, guys, I just got a message here, actually. Ryan from Reaquatics just said that he would throw a hundred in as well. Oh, there you go. Oh. That's gonna be a lucky Canadian, I'm telling you. <laughs> we might have to do two. The wheel, the wheel is a going. All right. So we had 52 entries. So let's click this and let it rip and see what we got. All right, good luck, everybody. This wheel drives me nuts. Uh oh, wait a minute. Where is it? Victor Gomez. All right, Victor, you gotta be oh, on. Victor, you gotta be on. You gotta where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Come on, Victor. Victor, Victor you're gonna Victor. catch on fire if you don't get this one right here. Oh my goodness! These and Victor is our avid contributor to the Facebook page. He's always on this. Oh no! Uh oh! I think Victor's got a snake in his boot. <laughs> Gosh! I don't know. I think we're gonna be spinning in it again. Okay, so here's what I suggest. While we're waiting on Victor, let's, let's just remember Victor Gomez here. But let's spin again for the second winner while we're waiting on Victor to respond. Okay. As Brian, I think, locked up there. Now I'm wondering if it's me or if it's just Ryan. Oh. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. What oh, Ryan froze. Yep. It's probably the wheel. Oh. And now a word from our sponsor. He'll be coming back in in a minute. He's just got to reset that, relaunch his wheel, and then he'll be right back. Uh, Dave, you didn't miss the contest, did you? Did you miss entering? What'd you do? Let's see. Aaron Ward deserves it. The dude is awesome. I agree. I'm definitely a big time contributor there, but got to be in to win. You know, we, we told everybody you've got to be watching the stream. We're going to randomly do it at some point in time. So if you're not watching, sorry. Don't be mad. <laughs> How many times can we say it? That is insane. Ryan dipping out like that on accident and everything. He, he now, just, how, how, how often I see him, he's still there. He just messaged me. He's still there. Um, Thomas, question. How often do you run those things on your Facebook page? Um, usually once a month we give away. We got some pretty good sponsors with Omega C and C and Reef. And she usually gives me a couple pair of clowns uh, a month to give away. So, oh, Those are sweet. And then I'm I, always like, I'm always like trying to hide at work. I got my phone. I'm trying to see. It seems like I always come right at like I miss it, and I see clowns gone. Yeah, that they don't they don't seem to last on the uh, the turnaround time for fish at the store is about six and a half days. So that's good. They, that's what it's they, all about. They come in and then they they go out um, as fast as I as fast as I can ship them in. Unfortunately. Well, that's the goal. That's the sign of a quality product. 
Yeah, Sea and Reef definitely has some good fish. I know I've got a few of them. Yeah, that is. Uh, we've eliminated all the other uh, hatcheries at this point. I've used every one of them, and uh, the fish just come in not in good condition. I'm not going to mention any other names, but the other hatcheries just aren't as uh, up to par as Sea and Reef. It's a little bit more uh, money, but it's a way better quality fish. See, and that's definitely a way to be. I mean, you, you look at a lot of stores, they're all for selling you know, gimped out fish or diseased fish or whatnot because they know that the consumer is going to get it, is going to die in their tank, and they're going to come back and spend more money. So it's definitely admirable to carry a better quality livestock. Yeah, and as you, as you know, we don't uh, we guarantee all of our fish. We don't just sell sick fish. If one happens to slip through and he is sick, we... I've never told a customer no that I won't replace their fish, and that's in all the way up to a, a gem tank. So, well, I mean, you had six lines come in, and they were sick after I wanted a six line, and you wouldn't even sell it to me because it was sick. So, right, that speaks volumes. It really does. All right, Ryan, are you yeah. back? <laughs> I am back. Sorry, guys. That just... she froze up. This whole damn thing froze up. Yeah, that wheel tends to do that. Yeah, I might have to pick a different wheel next time. And I was going to ask what the, where that was at so I could use it on mine, but never mind. Oh, no. Nice. <laughs> All right. There, there are some better ones out there, Thomas. I promise you. I'll, I'll point you in the right direction. Here we go. Let's spin the second. There you go. Rebooted the system. Poor Victor hasn't chimed in yet either. I think he's no blown way. Melanie Austin, Melanie Austin, if you're out there, you're on the clock. Victor, your time is running out. Melanie, you are contestant number two, and congratulations. You got to chime in and let us know that you're here. Everybody will swear that it was rigged, but the rules were very clear. You got to be here to claim your prize. Yep. I, I see a Facebook user saying yay. Yeah. I don't know what that means, yay. Identify yourself, and you got to prove who it is. Oh. Yeah, Melanie. I'm here. Who's here? I see somebody saying I'm here. I'm on the Facebook page, so if you're, if your name is not showing up, you can send us a message. Let us know who you are in the comments. You can also hit us up on Facebook. I got them all running right now. Yep. Yeah, I, <laughs> I got everything. I can see her name on Facebook. She's here. Who's that, Melanie? Yep, she's here. All right, congratulations, Melanie. I'm glad you're here. Congratulations. Congratulations. So we got right. one. So I guess we're going to have to draw our first one over again since we're not getting a response there. Uh, yeah. Real quick, though, Insane Reefer, reach out to Thomas. I'm sure he can get you hooked up and squared away. So Insane Reefer is just looking for a larger meso tank. Oh, yeah, I definitely can ship those. And I just had one a month ago that was 10 inches with three inch streamers. So, wow, that's a nice fish. Streamers already, that's an adult. Yeah, it was a beauty. And it was, it ate flake food. We feed the Omega One flake food at, uh, I love store. Omega One. I, I love the Omega One. one. <laughs> you just time I go live, I have to say it, buddy. You know that. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm not hating, I promise. It's just, it's funny. Every morning, it's, oh, I'm here at the store feeding my Omega One Flake food. <laughs> they feed all my fish, buddy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not voting you. I, I'm just saying. Like, it's just hilarious. Consistency. You are, if not anything else, consistent with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love right. the omega. I love the omega one because I don't have to worry about those algae strips floating around in my tank. They suck that omega one right up. Oh yeah, the omega one's good. I mean, I literally get lionfish, copper bands, uh, pyramids. All the fish they say are hardest to eat. They eat omega one. My <laughs> yellow chorus eats that. <laughs> the chorus round. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. So. All right, Victor, yeah. Right I don't think he's showing up, guys. We're, we're not uh, getting well, I'm going to spend how many, people, how many people in the room to, to testify that Victor blew it? I don't want to hear him on Facebook tomorrow yelling it's rigged. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna I'm, we're going to hit it again, guys. Where are the 
no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. No whammy, big, 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 big buck, stop. <laughs> uh oh, who's that? Whoa, oh, hey, oh, hey. Is that Chris? Chris Shelton. Chris Shelton. Chris Shelton, come on down. You're the next contestant winner. <laughs> we should put a timer on, I guess. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, I say, I don't care how bad the leg is. I say you got one minute to respond. If you aren't even responded back in a minute, you out. Yeah. Time to go. You got to be here to win it. Well, yeah, I mean, you should be, they should be watching theoretically. Yeah. So. That's the perks. Them's the rules. <laughs> Heard that I'm one. I'm looking. Amy? Yep. Man, no, I, no Amy. Was there. I don't see anybody else there claiming. Amy, don't be tagging anybody on Facebook, okay? That's cheating. If they're not in here to win it, that's I'm not tagging anybody. I am looking at the comments. See that there? I am on there keeping everybody honest. Amy says she wishes she could tag them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, what the beautiful thing, Amy always wants everybody to win. She is like solid gold. That's she was true. voting for other tanks in the tank off against her own tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's as honest as honest can get. Right? She is. So it looks like it's been over a minute now, guys. And somebody made a good comment. Set your notifications so that when we get live, you're getting the notifications. If you're you not following, that. only on you. You got to smash that bell. I'm telling you. Smash the bell. It's true. All right. Sorry, Chris. We got to move on. Here. Yeah. People got things to do. Here we go. We're going to spin that wheel. I, don't even I thought it was Victor again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take him off. I was going to get him off of there. Right? All right, Marianne, if you're in here, let us know. Clock's running. Come on, Marianne. <laughs> don't you guys want to win? Why join a contest if you don't want to know when you win? That's the whole point. I'd be there with bells on. I mean, oh, yeah. Hey, Thomas, go ahead. Shout out your uh, Facebook page again and the group. Colorado Saltwater is the uh, is my private group. Um, we have all tons of specials on there. That's where I do live feeds every day, and we do a lot of crazy stuff. Live auctions twice a week. Awesome, awesome. All right, Marianne is here. She commented saying that she's here. So congratulations, Marianne. Congratulations, uh, congratulations Marianne. You got an awesome coral coming your way. Yeah. Very much. You do. All right, guys. Definitely read you two that one. Definitely reach out to one of us so we can get your shipping information passed on to Thomas. Or if you want to reach out to Thomas directly, um, we'll make sure that this gets squared away one of the one way or another. So whichever way you want. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Thomas. Man, those are some awesome prizes. Yeah, that is sweet. Yeah. And check them out on Facebook, Colorado Saltwater. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. No problem, guys. We'll do it again real soon. Sounds Thanks. good. Sounds good. I really appreciate you, you know, uh, going up against Sean there. <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs> yeah, some Canadians are going to be winning. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one. They're going to be uh, happy. I know that. We'll get uh, you that. Uh, that one too, uh, we're we're going to have to uh, add on some uh, steps here. Like, uh, you know, follow your Instagram page. So you're going to have to start boosting that IG. Boost Buddy, I, don't, I, I didn't have no social <laughs> media for 36 seven years hey it's a social media world now I'm yeah. it up. And now i'm on social media every day all day unbelievable <laughs> believe me so, we, so we you guys can relate too <laughs> exactly yeah if you guys are not following thomas's channel instagram facebook get out there so that you can see what the guy has clownfish spectacular call spectacular yep exactly and you're welcome melanie yeah, congratulations to all the winners. Dave um, says he's looking you up right now after the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, Sean is savage. Yes. Yes, I am savage. You know this, Amy. That's why people come back. They want to <laughs> see the nice guys and the asshole. I'm just saying. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, Sean said a bad cuss word. Oh, you sorry. Guys, 
Diva PG. Just demonetized the whole thing right there. Sorry. It's okay. Ryan dropped a worse one earlier. <laughs> I, I snuck one in there. I know. That's what I'm saying. All right, guys. Um, another great week here. You know, had a lot of good stuff happen. Happy New Year again to everybody. Let's make 2021 absolutely amazing. Stay safe. Don't catch COVID. Definitely check out Thomas's stuff. He's got great stuff. Other than that, um, have a safe week, and we'll see you next yeah. week. Yeah, we should have a special guest uh, next Saturday. Everything works out. Should be good to go. This will be a very interesting one. Yeah. And remember, follow all of us. <laughs> exactly. all right, let's go, D. Come on, you do it better than me. You got to be in it to win it. Follow all of us. Beeves Reef, Farm Boy Reef, Colorado Saltwater, D from Brooklyn. Check them out. Click the thumbs up. If you've been following all this time and you ain't been clicking that thumbs button right there, the little one with the thumb like this, you're living under a rock. Get out from under that rock, people. Come on. Exactly. We make it all about Sharon, Karen, and we are Reef Collective. Oh, special little shout out before we end this here. Jason, awesome. Thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate the support. Never required, never desired, but definitely appreciated. Thank you so much. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great week. Have a good night, everyone. You guys have a good night. Thank you.